Welcome to Maestro Heights. Greetings, everyone. This is Gail Macinda with History Quick. You know, if I could go back in history to any one event, I would probably want to go to the Columbian Exposition. It was really a World's Fair that was held in Chicago in 1893. Chicago at that time was the nation's second largest city, only behind New York. The Columbian Exposition, or the World's Fair, was held from May 1st until October 30th of 1893. And it is amazing to think that in that amount of time, more than 27 million people went through those gates in Chicago. Even more staggering when you consider that that was over 40% of the population of the entire United States. It really was a World's Fair with 46 nations participating. Everybody was trying to put out their very best innovations and their brightest ideas and their most creative inventions to show the world as they were moving on to, into this new century. Everybody wanted to participate too. Buffalo Bill tried to get in, but they wouldn't let him. So he just set up his Wild West show across the street. Entertainers like Scott Joplin wanted to play too, but they weren't allowed for some very not nice reasons. So they set up and played their music outside. So the whole city, the whole region was caught up in World's Fair fever. A lot of people from across the nation, a lot of people came from long distances, a lot of people came a little bit more locally too. And one of our guests that we have for us today is Gary Mustaine. He is a tailor from Galesburg, Illinois, and he has just gotten back from the fair and is gonna tell us about one of the things that he found particularly intriguing. So please tell us, well, what did you see and what do you think? Well, thank you, Gail. Well, you know, at the World's Fair, there's all sorts of amazing things and, and new inventions to look at and new developments. And I, being a tailor, was very interested in a new product that they're trying to uh, come along with. It's called the Clasp Locker. And the clasp locker, I think, will completely uh, change the way that I do some of my business with the the uh, the buttons and the hooks and the snaps and the things like that that put the clothing together. This is a piece that goes up the back, and you push it up with a with a glider. It goes all the way up. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's uh, it, it was originally it was originally made in 1851 uh, by Elias Howe, and he called it an automatic clothing closure. <laughs> yeah, but it 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 wasn't very user friendly. It had it was big, and the 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 pieces that went together didn't lock. Well, and it was a bit clumsy. And so in 1891, Whitcomb Judson improved the design and they brought it to the World's Fair, which I just got to see. It was very exciting. Well, it would make sense that Mr. Judson would be there at the fair since he was from Chicago as well. So he probably saw this as an opportunity to do some promotion of his product. Do you think that it's something that will catch on? Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, that that automatic closure, that um, what now they call it the clasp locker, is going to change the way that we do business. You know, if, for instance, in a dress, a lot of times we use long rows of hooks and eyes or laces to put the, uh, the piece together. This could have a clasp locker up the back of the garment and go all the way up to the neck and it would completely close the dress. And it would be a lot easier and a lot quicker, I would think too. Now this clasp locker, it was originally designed as my understanding for shoes. It was, it was. It was originally designed for shoes. So in the, uh, they used to use uh, the shoes with the hook and the buttons, and you would have to 
coordinate that hook in there to get those buttons and those, those little hooks all put together, which they still do that. But now they have that clasp locker and it can zip up a boot mm -hmm. and it'll, or a pair of shoes. It'll zip it shut. And that's a much easier way. So you see the practical application for this. Um, do you think that it will hurt your work or do you think it could help it? Or what do you, what do you think about that? I think it'll help it. I think it's going to, because I think people are going to be more excited about, uh, you know, finding things that, um, you know, that are easier to put on. And so if I can make something for them, with this clasp locker in it, I think they'll be thrilled because it is, um, it's gonna make getting dressed much easier. You'll have to have less help. It'll take less time. So I think it'll be a big improvement. Very, very good. Well, I have to ask, since you're from Galesburg, while you were at the fair, did you see the Ferris wheel? Oh yes, it's enormous. I had no idea it would be so big. And I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of it, but they mm -hmm. were big cars that people sat in and it went all the way around to the top and the bottom. I rode on it. Oh, it was, what, what a treat that must have been. Well, Ginsburg's mighty nice. proud of the Ferris wheel because of our connections with George Ferris, who was the one, the designer of the Ferris wheel. So he, he made us proud. So I was glad that you got to go up there and see his invention and to see this class blocker. It's going to be very interesting, interesting to see how that develops in years to come into something else that, that we'll be able to use and enjoy and benefit from. Yeah. Well, and Right now, it is owned by a company called the Universal Fastener Company. And that is uh, headed up by Colonel Lewis Walker. And he has control of it. And I think we're gonna be seeing it real soon, coming out a lot. And people are gonna be very excited by it. This is exciting for us too. Let's see what happens. And we appreciate you being with us today here on History Quick. I'll put links down below on the program notes for everything that we've talked about, the Buffalo Bill and the Scott Doplin and the Ferris wheel and, and our class blocker. That's kind of interesting to see what that's gonna turn out to be. Well, remember folks, we, as always, we learn from history, but we don't live there. Go out and be awesome today. Till next time, bye-bye. Thanks for watching Meister Heights History Quick. We've got more great stories coming up, so be sure to click that subscribe button. See you in the next video.